Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to make a bit of a video and guide about the incinerate character that I just posted about killing Uber at Sirion on the Torment League. To uh, start things off, I'll say that it doesn't necessarily have to be a Torment character. I'm fairly confident this character will go great through Hardcore as well. So, just a bit of a baseline comment there. So, I'm currently level 92. I got to about level 87 on the actual character itself and then went ahead and respect my level 91 Templar into Incinerate because I just wanted to skip a few levels and I knew that I loved this build. So the basis of this build is using Incinerate with GMP, LMP if you want to, but um, basically Incinerate shotguns, which means that the more beams that hit a single target, the more damage it's going to do. So if you're standing there and all your beams hit the target at the very base of the beam, uh, base of the spell, then you're doing damage from all of those beams at once. Which is why using GMP is so much more preferable than a single stream. So with our Incinerate uh, build, um, I'm running Herald of Thunder, Herald of Ice, Purity of Fire, and clarity. I of course have electric, electric eldritch battery to make this possible, so I still have 560 mana left over, which is plenty to be able to run arctic armor and get some casts in with my high regen. So at the moment I have a 19 at 20 incinerate. Um, quality on incinerate is super important because it gives you increased projectile speed which makes it shoot further. Without projectile speed you won't shoot anywhere near as far. You'll probably go from, without any projectile speed, you'll probably go from here to about the stash. Whereas with all my projectile speed, boom. Um, added Chaos, it does lots of extra Chaos damage for the build, especially if you stack Spell Power, which I have done, and faster casting, all that sort of thing. So as you can see, my fire damage there is 218 to 327, my Chaos is 125 to 187. So Chaos is actually quite a large percentage of the fire damage, even though this is a purely fire spell to start with. After that, faster casting, 2020 very important, and spell echo, 2020 pretty important as well. Um, Incinerate goes through several phases. So when you first start casting it, it's at zero stacks, and then it builds up to, as you can see up here, one, two, then three. At the third stage, it does 300% more damage which means you want to hit that as soon as possible. So the more cast speed you have, the faster you're going to hit that, and the more damage you're going to be doing. So faster casting and spell echo are pretty important for the spell, and so is stacking a lot of um, cast speed. GMP, that's actually your two staples are basically incinerate GMP, and then you can put in these three as you see fit. My last one was fire pen. Now I went with fire pen last as opposed to chaos damage because felt it's doing less than the added chaos. My added chaos is probably mm, just a bit over half of the amount of fire damage I do. So fire pen gives you 34% penetration just on your fire damage, which added chaos gives you all that extra added chaos without really getting any of it resisted back, any of it reflected back. I feel like it's probably just more useful to start out with. Fire pen will probably only be more useful or better as a gem if you really stack fire damage heavily, which I have not done. So that's up to you. And then fire pen as a sixth link is pretty nice because then you can swap in life leech whenever you see fit. But I only ever do that for uber runs because I don't need it anywhere else. So if uber runs, I'll swap in life leech for a few certain fights. Otherwise, I'm relying on my one percent fire from Doriani's to keep me just afloat. It doesn't actually, like 1% fire leech isn't necessary in the build, it just gives you a bit of sustain. Most of your recovery is going to come from your uh, life flask or from your leech from the 8 series promise. So on top of that I'm using two wands. You can use like Doriani's catalyst, two of those, but that only stacks your elemental damage as opposed to spell power which stacks your elemental and chaos damage. So the important thing on the ones is to get high spell power to start with and then high cast speed. Those are your two main goals on a wand, absolutely. Mana regen, it's a nice bonus. You don't necessarily need it. Fire damage, once again, nice bonus. 
1% fire leech, bit of a bonus. Uh, but after that, you really want some projectile speed on both wands. So I projectile speed on both of them. Tora crafts it, not um, Katarina. We go over here and projectile speed, 10 to 30. It is a suffix, and um, projectile speed is absolutely great. Because I feel like if you don't have projectile speed on your wands, you probably want to use a projectile speed gem. Otherwise, your range is just going to be too shitty. So I did use the projectile speed gem until I got my wands at about level 80 or so. So I used projectile speed for a very long time instead of um, fire pen or add chaos. Pick one of those two. Um, so yeah, that's your baseline. If you want to use a shield, you absolutely can, but that's up to you. You do lose some of that sweet, glorious tooltip. My tooltip right now is 12k. It can go a bit higher with a few gear upgrades, as well as a uh, level on incinerate, maybe another one if I get it 21. So belt, Dorianis, that's kind of up to you. I was using this belt most of the time, but I ended up just going with this belt for a bit of extra sustain and ease of play. If you go with just like more life-based gear, you can probably hit 6k life pretty reliably. A helm, any sort of helm. Uh, mine's just an armor base with life and a few resistances. I'm actually pretty heavily overcapped. Whoops, pretty heavily overcapped on resistances at the moment, so I could upgrade this to get more life, etc. Um, chest, any sort of chest will do. High life and high energy shield is the goal with this chest. So the high energy shield gives you most of your mana regen from Eldritch Battery. High life helps sustain you and resist as well. So you can go a full ES Varigali if you want. But with the Saintly Chainmail and with my other things on, I get, what, 15% fizz reduction. Which, you know, you can take it or leave it. It's not a big deal. Without it, it's 5%. So you could just go a full ES chest. But this is what I had laying around as a 6 link, so this is what I decided to use. Um, spell damage, cast speed, life, dexterity. They're your main things on an amulet. You don't get much dexterity from the tree, and you need it to be able to run GMP. And yeah, that's pretty much it. GMP is the one that sucks away most of your dexterity. So that's why I'm using a high dex amulet. Rings, mana regen, life, cast speed. This one's pretty much the perfect example, but it's kind of weak in certain areas. They're not very expensive rings at the moment. But it is what it is, it's what I got. Combs, roots. So, while playing Incinerate, I kind of just got to the conclusion that I hate being stunned. Because as soon as you get stunned, it like resets your stacks and interrupts all your damage, and it just feels terrible. So I went ahead and got some Combs, Greaves, Roots, Titan Greaves. They give you so much life, they give you unwavering stance, and you cannot be knocked back. So they're just incredible boots if you're happy to warp around everywhere. And I got used to it. With my insane amount of cast speed on the build, as well as Lightning Warp at level 20, uh, 2020, and 2020 20 reduced duration, you really pretty much go as fast as you possibly can. It's up to you when warping around. And it feels pretty good combined with Incinerate and with Arctic Armor so you don't actually run and lose mana. So right now I have 280 mana regen and I'm just barely losing mana from my Arctic Armor which is level 21. Uh, I'd suggest something like 230 to 250 mana regen at the minimum for the 20 level 20 Arctic Armor to be working. Because with my Arctic Armor up and my Incinerate casting I'm just barely losing mana so it's not much of a, not really a big deal at all at this stage of mana regeneration for me. Um, went with Purity of Fire as well. You can go with really any aura to fill in your last couple of slots. You last like 30-40% mana or whatever. I went with Purity of Fire, just give you extra fire. Resist, uh, mostly for something like Atsiri. Um, yeah, so you can tank those Flame Blasts for example. You can go with Purity of Lightning, if you just want more Lightning Resist. You can go for pure developments if you just want to be lazier with your gear. Because, yeah, I have resistances almost everywhere on my gear. These are just like hand me downs from other characters, so I have insane resistances. You might struggle to get the same kind. So, anyway, one instant life flask, it's serious promise, good DPS increase, and good survivability increase. I highly recommend it in this build. Taste of hate. 
it's basically just a defensive tool. If you don't have Taste of Hate, a nice granite would do pretty much the same thing. It'd be a bit worse. Um, a Ruby, Bleed Flask, a Topaz, Curse Flask. That's my current setup. Now to look at the passive tree, um, you can start as either a Templar, a Witch, or a Shadow. Shadow will be the least desirable, just because you don't get any extra bonuses from the other side of the passives. As a Witch, if you start there, you can then grab the 25% mana regen for one point, pretty efficient. As a Templar... Excuse me. As a Templar, you start there, you get a 20% mana regen node with 14 life, and a 5-5, five five, 1 point each, they're very efficient nodes. So it's really a toss-up between Witch and um, Templar as the best ones, but you can be any of these, Scion, Shadow, Templar, Witch. Now the basis behind my build is basically getting as much spell damage as you can, because spell damage, like I said, scales your Chaos and your Elemental. And on top of that, getting lots of cast speed. So what do we got? We got cast speed here, cast speed, cast speed. All these spell powers. Um, yeah, and then you try and fill out life where you can. Take these cast speed nodes in the shadow because they're better than 10 elemental by far. Going up here, I did do that to start with, but it's not particularly worth it anymore because fire damage just does not give you enough extra tooltip compared to spell damage, cast speed, or elemental damage. Since we are hardly considered a fire build anymore, it's very hybrid. Um, why did I lose some tooltip? That's weird. Anyway. Then we went down here. You can go down and use Life Leech and Vile Pact if it's really something you feel like you need. I haven't felt like I needed it at all, even for Uber Ziri. It'd probably make them a bit safer run, so... Um, Inner Force buffs your Heralds, buffs your Arctic Armor, also increases the amount of mana you drain from Arctic Armor though, so be careful of that, but it's a pretty good passive. And it's a pretty flexible passive tree. You can get rid of some cast speed by all means, grab some extra life, fill out this entire life wheel, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's fairly flexible, you can do as you see fit. So, you've already seen the gameplay, it's um... On an Uber at Zerion on the previous video, I'm still going to run just a quick courtyard straight to the bosses, get them down, see how, see what it's like. Um, this map was, I believe, some pack size, some lightning damage, early weakness, and something else not too troubling. So it shouldn't be a very tough map for me, but with early weakness, uh, I'm a bit under on my um, lightning resist. So I'll just bum rush the bosses real quick. As you can see, as long as you're standing still and casting, you absolutely just annihilate anything near you with any beams of your incinerate. It doesn't matter if it's shotgunning or not. That's how strong 12k tooltip looks like. And on top of that, um, if you really want, you can get Righteous Fire into your build just for boss kills, which is what I was doing for um, Uberit Ziri in the end. For like the trio, the, the Val constructs. You just pop your Righteous Fire before going into the fight, use Life Leech, and you can sustain it. And I sit at 23,000 tooltip with Righteous Fire up like that. So it's pretty handy DPS boost. Ah, wow, it seems to be raining maps when I basically don't care about maps anymore. Is just lovely, isn't it? So as you can see, with just pure warping around, you still do move around pretty quickly. The biggest problem is just hitting obstacles and all that. It's about to come up across the bosses. They are still a bit dangerous, absolutely. This guy, you just want to get out of his way, wait till he comes near you, and then he just melts. Uh, with my 40 lightning resist, that kind of hurts when she warps on top of me, but no big deal. And we have one to go. Sit here, face tank him, absolutely annihilate him. 
and he seems to drop the entire world on top of us. Um, yeah, I'll vent that. Grab this. Grab that. As well as this. I'll finish the map off off um, video, but that's basically all I want to highlight. Just a bit of gameplay and talk about the build. This is probably the build I'm going to be trying in the one month hardcore race. It's really easy to build, it's really flexible, it doesn't matter what gear you use, there's almost no requirements except for a bit of projectile speed, I feel, but you don't necessarily have to go that way, you can use the gem. Um, aside from that, it was um, a really easy leveling process with Incinerate. Incinerate is great for leveling with LMP or GMP, as you get it. Um, for my bandits, I went all three passives. You can go life if you really feel like it for the oak. And you can go car speed if you really feel like it for cruel. But I felt like there was enough car speed that I'd be able to take it later if I really wanted it. So I just went for the passive to start off with instead. Did I miss anything? Early weakness, best curse to use because it's pretty general on all of your stuff. 47 resistances, that affects almost all your damage except for the chaos. Um, yeah, Herald device. Herald of Thunder. My wand does have plus two lightning gems, so that makes my Herald of Thunder just a bit better. So that helps my tooltip along as well. Gear is fairly optimized at this point. I could still use better wands if I was going really expensive. And a higher level incinerate, of course. Don't really think I've left anything behind in this little guide. If you have any questions, feel free to come to the stream, as always and yell at me about what you need. So once again, this was Mathel. Um, this is my Incinerate build I just mocked up from scratch on Torment. I will probably try and take it to Hardcore. So, um, yep. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you next time.